Gosh, Mr. Hoback, please. Well, thank you, Chair. And again, I'd like to thank the witnesses for coming out this evening and being part of this very important process. You know, what you say here how it does have an impact on how we go through and, and the implementation of the budget is a very important matter for Canadians and Canadians as a whole. I come from the province of Saskatchewan, and the province of Saskatchewan in the last five years has just gone through tremendous change. It's gone through a tremendous amount of growth. Uh, it's seen policies that have created growth. It's the only province in Canada that has balanced its budget. Um, it has a premier that uh, has allowed business to flourish and has encouraged growth and has actually gone around the world trying to get employees. In fact, he was just over in Ireland trying to, uh, to get employees out of Ireland to come there because we need specific trades. We need people to come and fill all the jobs that have been created. And it's amazing when in early 2000s when I was in Saskatchewan under an NTP government, we've seen families moving out of Saskatchewan. In fact, Mr. Gene probably enjoyed that, that time of year because... In his writing, everybody that worked there was either from Newfoundland or Saskatchewan. And now I know a lot of the Saskatchewanites are moving back home and joining their families. So I, I really find it really interesting. And, and Mr. Weir, I'm going to direct this towards you. Like, you've been quoted as saying that Premier Wall is flanning the fames of Western alienation because he dared to speak out against NDP leader Thomas McClare's attack on Saskatchewan resource sector. I'm just <clears throat> baffled at that because, first of all, Mr. Wall did not start this debate. It was Mr. McClare. Mr. Wall was just defending Saskatchewan, the growth that's happening in Saskatchewan. And I'd also like to uh, point out the fact that uh, the growth in Saskatchewan has had tremendous, tremendous spin-off effects right across Canada. So you can't honestly say that we'd be better off without a strong resource sector. Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that's not what I'm saying. And in fact, I'm not sure what this question has to do uh, with the Investment Canada Act or a, the Omnibus uh, Budget Bill. Actually, it has uh, a lot to do with that, your credibility as a witness. I guess I'm happy to uh, answer it. It has yeah, a lot so of credibility as a witness. Give me a chance fact, to, uh, uh, Mr. Weir, in 2004, were you not a... Give me a chance to respond then. So it well, seems just, to just me a that second. I only got five minutes, Mr. Weir. Time, please. Uh, Thank you, Ms. Nash. Mr. Hoback, do you want to just clarify your question? Well, the reason I'm going there is in 2004, were you not a candidate for the NDP party in Wascana? Uh, yes, I absolutely was an NDP okay. candidate so, in the riding of Wascana. So I guess, um, again, you're talking about transparency. Can I go and respond to your uh, what initial question? One at a time. One at a time. Yeah, please. And where uh, I'm going with this is very... point of order. Really? What does the man's candidacy in 2004 have to do with this? I mean, I, I implore this committee to consider what is being yeah. asked. I, I'm sure, not, I'll get there. I, I, I'm not sure it's relevant, but it's... Uh, I will go ahead there. and clarify. The reason I ask this, Chair, is uh, when we bring witnesses forward, we take them very seriously. And the credibility is very important. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking at this witness and I'm saying, this is not a credible witness because this witness is not necessarily speaking on behalf of the economy. He's speaking on behalf of the NDP party of Canada or the NDP party in Saskatchewan. So how do I take what he tells me and give it credibility when I see garbage in what he's put in previous articles? So you know, when you start talking about the implications in the, the Budget Implementation Act, how can I stipulate when I look at your history here? You're, you're criticizing Saskatchewan. You're criticizing the Premier of Saskatchewan. You've gone through and you've criticized uh, 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 and blamed Saskatchewan's growth for creating unemployment in Ontario, which is totally false. So how do I take you as being credible when you talk about other aspects of the budget? So, M Mr. Weir, do well, you want okay. To First of all, to go back to your original point, I mean, Mr. Mulcair made um, some very reasonable observations, which is that this boom in the resource sector has driven up the exchange rate uh, to the detriment of manufacturing and other export industries across the country. The province of Saskatchewan itself has lost 5,000 manufacturing jobs since Premier Wall uh, took me, office. Mr. Weir, we've got a point um, of order. Excuse, excuse me, uh, Mr. Okay. The, the thing that has happened in this place is, is, is totally unacceptable. The reference to this man's work as being garbage. People who, come before, people who come before this committee deserve due respect. That is absolutely uncalled for, to say that his work is garbage. You don't even know what this man does, and you're characterizing it as garbage. That's blatantly unfair. Our chair, uh, point of order, first of all, uh, what I'm trying to do is this, this person's claiming to be an expert witness in a certain specific part of the Budget Implementation Act. I'm looking at that and I'm saying based on his history and what he said on previous economic issues and how wrong he has been in relevance to Saskatchewan, that he cannot be a credible witness. That is what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, on the same point of order, uh, Mr. Mai and then Mr. Adler. I think uh, no, we're, we are at our 65th meeting, and I think I've never heard an attack like we have from Mr. Holbach. 
I think we have a lot of witnesses who are here. I think the finance committee has been very reasonable and always mentioned that I uh, enjoy working here. But um, to attack someone on a personal level and where we have witnesses who are here, who came here, who have waited for us to talk about the bill, I think Mr. Holbach is out of order. Thank you, Mr. Adler. Mr. Holbach is in order. And um, it's clear that uh, uh, Mr. Weir has an agenda. And he spoke about transparency and yet wasn't transparent about his past. And uh, the fact of the matter is that Mr. Hoback did not say that his uh, contribution or his work is garbage. What he did say was that um, those quotes um, that are attributed to him, which he did not deny, are, are garbage. Okay. M Mr. Adler, maybe I could just uh, help the discussion along a little bit. I, I don't believe that this is a genuine point of order. I think it's a point of discussion. I appreciate the comments that have been made. I'd like to caution the members of the committee that uh, we're working long hours and we need to show respect to, to those people that have given their time to come here and I think it's fair for us to have a vigorous debate but I think what you're making is in fact a point of debate. Yes, Mr. Hoback. I, I just want to defend myself, Chair. First of all, this is not a, attack, a personal attack on Mr. Weir. It will never will be. I don't do business that way. What I am questioning though is his credibility and I'm actually questioning whether or not he's actually representing the United Steel Workers or okay, if he's representing Mr. the Hoback, NDP yeah, I'm going to I'm going to interrupt and say these these are all points of debate. Uh, these witnesses have all come here in good faith, and you can disagree with what somebody is presenting, but uh, and debate with them vigorously. But uh, I would I would leave it at that. Um, can we move on? I'm saying that this is a point of debate. I have a question for the chair, though. Yeah. Does I think that? There's a list there. I'm, sure. I'm on the list. I'm sure. Yeah. So am I. Okay, okay. Mr. Sims. No, I'll, I'll stay out of this one for now. <laughs> <laughs> Just for now. Okay. Yeah, I think I was. No, we had Mr. Marston. The only thing I'm going to say at this point does that mean that every witness that comes before us now, we're going to have to ask them what political party they're associated with, what background, what activity they've done, what's their history, what comments they may have made? I mean, it's taking it to a level that we shouldn't be doing. Why don't we just talk to the witnesses about C38 and get on with this? Mr. Mr. Jean. Thank you. I, I would like to say in relation to the point of order, Mr. Holbeck has five minutes to ask questions. Um, this individual has come forward criticizing the government in relation to our budget. My understanding is he was a candidate in 2004 for the NDP, but also he currently holds a position with the NDP either in Saskatchewan or federally, and I think it's a legitimate question to ask whether or not he still holds a position because he's criticizing the government and he's supposed to be an independent witness, not a member of the NDP criticizing the government. I think it's a legitimate question. So does he have a, a current role with the NDP uh, federally or provincially? That's a good question. Well, well, I don't know, but let's just get back to the debate. And I just, again, encourage all members to be respectful. And uh, sorry, was there someone else who had a comment? Did I you thought have a comment? I was on a long yeah. time ago. <laughs> well, I'm not keeping the list. So the clerk is keeping the list. So you're up next. I, I actually wanted to agree with um, Madam Chair uh, regarding the fact that this is actually a point of debate that's frankly probably gone on far too long. Um, I would like to get back to the study at hand, but I agree wholeheartedly with what Mr. Jean just said. This was a question posed to this witness, interrupted by the NDP, um, and it was not a point of order, and I believe Mr. Holbach ought to be allowed to continue. This is relevant, completely relevant, because independence of witnesses is essential to making sure that we represent Canadians' um, interests properly. And so I would suggest, Madam Chair, that um, Mr. Holbach be given back his time and that we proceed, but that uh, you rule uh, that that, in fact, was not a point of order and that Mr. Holbach can continue the line of questioning he began. Well, let me just clarify, the clock stops when the point of order is raised. And I'm going to say again that I have said it's a point of debate and not a point of order. And I would just encourage all committee members to be respectful. And it's fine to make a point on something, but we have to be respectful to the witnesses that have come here. And it's fine to ask them questions and then to let them answer. Can you inform me how much time is left? You have a minute and a half. Minute and a half. Okay, Mr. Weir, have you or have you ever been a member of the NDP party? Or are you presently a member of the NDP party? 
Uh, yes, I've been a member of the New Democratic Party for 15 years. United Steelworkers, or are you speaking on behalf of the NDP party? Well, I mean, as you may be aware, the United Steelworkers Union is itself affiliated to the New Democratic Party. So, so I mean, it's no, it's no secret that I'm a member of the so, NDP or that I was an NDP candidate in the past. It's not as though you've unearthed some deep, dark secret here. So when you do policy for United Steelworkers, are you doing policy based on what the NDP want that policy to be or based on what the United Steelworkers need that policy to be? Well, I've given you a presentation based on the experience that members of the United Steelworkers have had with foreign takeovers in the Canadian economy. Okay. I think I'm going to move on, and uh, uh, I think I've proven my point, Madam Chair, that uh, the credibility of this witness is definitely questionable because of his political ties and because of his motives uh, politically in criticizing the budget bill, which the NDP would never vote for anyway. So I think it's very clear in this case, the situation. Um, Crystal clear. Actually, I think I'll leave it at there, Madam Chair. I think I've got about four or five seconds.